conduct under China, with Japan bobbing on top of it. The North American plate is moving south, and the, the China plate is um, moving east. So it's a terrible, terrible place. It would be like trying to crawl on top of a gunny sack with about five big hogs in it, all wiggling and jumping around and pushing each other. And I'd, I'd like to see you or me or anyone try to stay on top of that gunny sack. So that's basically the tectonic setting of Japan. And um, the Hamaoka plate is near the junction of three plates. I was able to get the um, Tokyo Electric Power Company map, uh, which has the, um, the faults and the strata, the, the geologic layers or rock types and everything on it because that's what TEPCO submitted to the Japanese government in, in order to operate, for the license to operate Hamaoka. So I went to Hamaoka and I had a press conference there. And then I went to the prefecture headquarters where the governor and the, the prefecture government operates and I had another press conference there. And I had walked all around Hamaoka the day before and collected rocks and took pictures and uh, observed the intake and exhaust pipes. They're huge. They're, they're um, twice as wide as this room. They consume huge amounts of, of water for the cooling systems. And I held up the map and showed the, uh, all the reporters what it looked like. And I said, can you see? the faults on this map. Can you see how the reactors are carefully placed between the faults? They said, yeah. And I said, instead of the rocks lying flat like they're supposed to, they're standing on their sides. And I said, this is not a safe place to build a nuclear power plant. And they said, but TEPCO told, it was, told us it was safe. So I took a baggie out of my backpack and I held up a baggie and I said, these are the rocks that those reactors are sitting on. And I took a rock out and I crumbled it like sugar. And they said, we're all going to write stories about this. And all of them wrote articles that were in the Japan newspapers the next day. Even the most conservative one, the Yomiuri News, which was started by a military uh, war crimes character who was very pro-nuclear power, and he used the Yumiori News to promote nuclear power in Japan and sell it to the public. Even their reporter wrote an article about it. So here we have a country that is just an accident waiting to happen. And I wrote a 2004 article for the Japan Times after the Hamaoka visit, and I hope all of you will read it. It's in English on the internet. And it's called Japan's Deadly Game of Nuclear Roulette. Now the tragic thing is that every nuclear power plant can be converted to natural gas. Because all that reactor does is boil water to turn the turbines to produce electricity. You can put, uh, take the reactor out, put a gas burner in, produce eight times more energy, much cheaper, eliminate the environmental hazard of the emissions because all of the radiation of, from operations every day goes up the stack. And it ends up in all the fields and the food and the, in the water, drinking water, and in baby's teeth. I've collected 6,000 baby teeth from children living around nuclear power plants in the U.S with a small group of scientists. Dr. Ernest Sternglass is one of them, and he helped to convince the Senate to sign the Partial Test Ban Treaty in 1963. I also collected baby teeth in, in Japan, in Tokyo, and the radiation levels were the same as for children living around nuclear power plants in the U.S. Um, the two babies that had the highest strontium-90 levels in their baby teeth were born in Washington, D.C. So, nuclear power is not compatible 
with life, with welfare, with good health, but it sure is compatible with bankers, and that's why we have it. And the other reason we have it is because Queen Elizabeth, I call her Queenie, owns all of the mineral rights to 27 countries, the British Isles, and many territories, the Commonwealth. And she even owns the mineral rights to the international maritime limits, which are 200 miles offshore. So all the wind farms, the BP oil platforms offshore, they all belong to her personally. She owns over 35 trillion, I'm sorry, she owns land worth over $35 trillion. She's the richest person in the world. And she has huge, huge uranium deposits in Canada, in Australia, in other countries. And it's completely worthless dust unless you have an industry, even a fraudulent and corrupt industry, that gives you a way to sell it. That's nuclear power. This is Hamaoka from the air. It's on the ocean and the four reactors uh, you can see. These are the four reactors and these are the turbine buildings where the steam is piped there to turn the turbines to, uh, to produce electricity. Um, after nine, 90 minutes after cooling stops in a nuclear power plant, the reactors go into meltdown. Now, after the accident, the cooling systems did not work for almost 24 hours. They couldn't get the backup systems to work. The pump for the cooling systems that operate normally is down close to the ocean. It's right on the beach. So that got flooded and destroyed by the, uh, the tsunami. The second backup, the first backup system is diesel and that's in the basement underneath the reactor. And after a 32 or 34 foot wave, tsunami went over that building, uh, it flooded that system. Then there was the battery backup system. They couldn't get that to work. So almost 24 hours after the earthquake, they still did not have cooling in those reactors. So they were actually in advanced stages of meltdown. Uh, in September, TEPCO secretly put MOX fuel in unit number three. MOX fuel is mixed uranium and oxide. It's extremely dangerous. It's very hazardous when it escapes into the environment and it's very hot and hard to control. That was unit number three, which was the second one that blew up. That's the plutonium and uranium oxides <laughs> and spent fuel rods, uh, detritus and dust and smoke that's going up into the air. And that has now contaminated the whole northern hemisphere. <coughs> this is the control room. Now there are the um, emergency responders in not very effective protective gear. They really should have air tanks and complete uh, covered enclosed suits on them, but they don't. It's so radioactive in that plant that everyone who has worked there is going to die of radiation poisoning. This is what I call Japan kamikaze emergency responders and they're
The sea lion problem has taken a disturbing turn. They're showing up dead now on a wildlife refuge near Imperial Beach. Attendees viewer contacted us concerned about the number of deaths. New at 5, 10 News reporter Hannah Mullins talked to a woman who has taken matters into her own hands. There are at least five sea lions that have been left out here to rot within a football field of me. It is difficult for any animal lover to see, but Connie Martinkus here just couldn't bear the sight any longer. This is the third makeshift grave she's made, and it's wearing on her. It hurts to come out here every day and see them. Four days ago, she was walking with her dog, Barley, when she saw this adult sea lion. She says she contacted the city of Imperial Beach, SeaWorld, and lifeguards, but it just decomposed as more showed up. This is disease spreading. You don't know what's in these, and people are laying around these animals. I see it daily. You can see a skull surrounded by flies and smell the rotting skin, but it's more than a health hazard for Martinkus. Don't they deserve to be buried and, and not laying here decaying, looking horrible? She grew up by this beach, but says it's the worst she's ever seen. On Thursday, SeaWorld's Marine Mammal Rescues hit a record at 475 for the year, just three months in. Almost all were severely malnourished sea lions, which tells them something is wrong with their food source. The lifeguards have been fabulous about calling SeaWorld and getting the live pups rescued. All the dead ones have been over here where the lifeguards don't have jurisdiction. But lifeguards say dead mammals on a state park or wildlife refuge like this are left to decay naturally. I want these poor animals to quit dying. In the meantime, Martinkus will continue building those graves. In Imperial Beach, Hannah Mullins, 10 News. A very popular spot for tourists and locals could soon be looking different. Some of the sea lions that sunbathe on San Diego's cliffs and coastline are starving. San Diego 6's Jenny Day joins us live from La Jolla to explain what's going on there. Jenny. Hey guys, San Diego sea lions are so hungry, they're literally gnawing on rock. Many are found near death, washed up on our beaches with a belly full of sand and rock because there's literally nothing else for them to eat. When the fish and the legs catch fire, will it be worth it then? And when the cancer rates 90% or high, will it be worth it then? When the whole world's at war over water and oil, will it be worth it There's no more spoils, will it be worth it then? If not, if not, what will it take to make you change your mind? What kind of sign would convince you that people are worth more than you? Faster than